What if cars became driverless? Vehicles controlled not by you, but by computers, charged with getting you safely from A to B. If you've just passed your test, you're probably not that willing to give up your newfound independence. But if you've ever been on the M4 on a bank holiday weekend, you would be so interested in relinquishing control for a bit. The manufacturers know that you're onto something as well. By 2025, it's estimated that the driverless car industry will be worth an incredible 900 billion pounds globally. I mean, there are lots of good reasons to embrace the change. 90% of road fatalities in the UK are thought to be caused in some way by human error. By removing us clumsy humans, you can remove a whole manner of risks like tiredness, drinking or random concentration lapses. Going driverless may keep us moving too. Nobody likes sitting in a queue. And automating cars could also help reduce congestion, pollution and the boredom faced by thousands of children. As you may already know, Google is one of the main players in this field. It started its self-driving car project in 2009 and has since covered a whopping one million miles on both open and city roads. Apparently, a part Nissan-funded project in Oxford is also coming along rather nicely. Google originally modded an existing car, but new designs want to integrate the controls into the engine and hardware and software. If you ignore the police siren-like sensor stuck to the roof for one moment, it doesn't really look that different to your bog-standard small car. Yeah, they might have given it smooth curves and lines and rounded edges to look futuristic, well, I kind of think it just looks cute and kind of harmless. Inside though, it has no steering wheel or pedals, which makes sense, but is just plain weird. There's just one button, push it, and off you go. So how does it work? The cars are covered in technology that work together to create a system called Chauffeur. The most obvious piece of tech is the LiDAR sensor on the roof. LiDAR means light detection and ranging. Think of it like a highly accurate radar or sonar system. It has 64 lasers that rotate and send micro pulses of light out into its surroundings. Then it uses time of flight, how quickly the laser reflects back to it to work out the distances. Millions of data points are taken every second and this data allows the onboard computer to create a real-time 3D map of the car's environment that is accurate to the centimetre. A technology known as computer vision makes sense of the 360 degree pictures taken by the cameras and allows the car to look out for traffic lights, read road signs, monitor other cars and make sure the car doesn't hit any unpredictable obstacles like traffic cones or pedestrians. All this data, plus GPS info, is then processed by a central computer which uses it to control the car's steering, acceleration and, importantly, braking. In the future, these cars could be connected to a centralised system, kind of like an air traffic control but for cars, in which every car's data is uploaded. And in this way, each car's position to the next would be known, and that could put an end to queuing traffic and fender benders. The UK, for one, is betting heavily on this technology. The government invested £100 million in 2015. It allowed driverless cars to be driven on our roads and even wrote a new code of practice, a bit like the highway code that includes rules for driverless cars. Oh, if you want to try it out and see it in action, there are four trials running in the UK. In Milton Keynes, there's an autonomous shuttle car service between the station and the city centre with a Lux Pathfinder. And there are plans afoot for driverless buses because they take the same routes all the time so they can be calibrated more easily. If you do fancy becoming a fully-fledged backseat driver, well, you've probably got time to start saving. It's going to be a minimum of five years before the prototype testing is done and probably an age after that before fully automated vehicles can be bought outright. There are some cars, though, that let you have a little taste of the future. BMW is testing something that's called the Remote Valet Parking Assistant. Using laser scanners, the car is able to find a free space and park the car for you. It will even meet you at the entrance of the car park when you're done shopping so you don't have to remember where you parked it. Genius. Now, if only it could actually take the driving test in the first place, that's the sort of future I'm looking for. These days, our entire lives seem to be guarded by passwords. The question is, is this system of password creation needed, or is it just a false sense of online security? Well, there are three ways to crack passwords.